Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. Together we're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. This email is from Manny. Email says, um, hey guys, does this chart in any way alter your opinion about paying for some law schools? And uh, we have a link here, I have clicked it. This is coming uh, from Public Legal, which I L R G dot com. Okay. I have no idea what that is, <laughs> but it is a ranking of, well, I guess there's 200 in total. Wait, if I click more, is it going to show me all of them? Anyway, it has law schools ranked. It's a table that you can rank law schools by median salary in the private sector or you can rank them by median salary in the public sector. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'd love to get these numbers combined because, of course, they're going to be extraordinarily high if you separate them out. If you separate private out of public, <laughs> yeah. well, the five also, people who went private got $180,000. That's no, lovely. Yeah. Well, we see here how big law firms are in, loss, are in lockstep on first year associate salaries, right? So yeah. everybody at big law firms right now makes $180,000 a year. So there's this 23 way tie for first <laughs> between all kinds of schools, including Stanford and Yale. Um, Howard University? This, yeah, oh, but this just also, proves my point. I mean, <laughs> right. well, how many people are, oh, right. okay. Right, Vanderbilt <laughs> and Howard and all these other schools, Irvine, Oh no, Irvine. Sorry, they're they're at twenty fourth with one hundred and seventy thousand, which makes me mm. think that one person from their school <laughs> went to a, you know, not the highest big law firm. But anyway, um, I mean, what that's really saying is that the median, and I guess your median is the middle number, right? So that would be your, your median is the most common number, right? No, that's the mode. The median is the middle number. The mode is the most common number. The median is the middle number. The mean is the arithmetic average, uh, average of add a ball. Up yeah, sure. Mean. Sorry, I was thinking about. Yeah, okay. So mean. You were thinking of the mode. Median yep. is the middle number, but so, okay. So we have a whole bunch of schools here that have one hundred eighty thousand dollars as their median salary for people who went into private. Okay. So this is all the people who went into small firms, medium-sized firms, um, big firms. I don't think anybody's going in-house right out of uh, law school, probably. Uh, maybe solo practitioners. But in order for the median salary to be 180000 that means that the middle number is 180000 which means that if you line up all of the salaries in order from highest to lowest... That middle number, the one person who's right in the middle, made exactly 180,000. And what it really means is that more than 50% of the class is making exactly 180,000. Because that's how you get 180,000 to be the middle number for all of these schools, right? You have to rent, you have to line them all up. And so there might be a few people who make 220,000. That's probably pretty rare. And then there can be as many as 49% of the class getting, they could be at a small firm making 50,000. Mm. And that yeah. would have no bearing on the median as long as more than half the class who went into private are making $180,000 exactly, then the yeah. middle number would be 180,000. But that's the big problem in my head is it, it's when you said... <laughs> Of those who go into private. And so I want to know how <laughs> many went into private. Like, are we talking 5% of the class, right? There's lies, there's damned lies, and statistics. Yeah. I don't remember where, where, where that comes from, but the, like, they are already slicing it into, well, this is just private practice. Yeah. And then they're not reporting the mean, which would be more useful. Mm-hmm. Instead, they're reporting the median, which is just the middle number. Yep. And shocker, yeah, the middle number of those people turns out to be 180,000. But yeah, that's the ridiculous thing is that <laughs> the median for Stanford private is 180 and the median for Vanderbilt private is 180. 
drastically different law schools, drastically different in the rankings and the prestige of the world. And location, yeah. And far more people are going to go into that $180,000 job from Stanford than they are from Vanderbilt, right? If there's only one person who goes into big who goes into private practice from Vanderbilt, exactly. and they happen to go big law and make 180, then that's their median. Yep. Hundred percent, which is why I'd prefer these. At the very least, bring them together. <laughs> if you gave me the median of both of these combined, then yeah. at least on some level, I'm gonna get the middle of the class. Well, <laughs> it also doesn't count like unemployed people, obviously, because you know, uh, it's yeah. Sort, it, <laughs> I just sorted on the the other column: median yeah. salary, public. Yep. And we get the prestigious. Golden Gate University oh Law School wow, there you at go. number one, which not to shit on Golden Gate, but I mean, that's just a very regional law school in downtown San Francisco. I mean, that's the third best law school in San Francisco proper, and it's the 10th best law school in the Bay Area. I mean, it's just like not <laughs> not prestigious by any means, but they're at the top of the charts on median salary public because, you know, they got one person who got a job and make $90,000. Yeah. But, but they don't, the, the entire rest of the class could be unemployed as far as we know. Yeah. So this is like almost useless data. And unless you combine this with an employment, like what percentage of the class went into private and what percentage of the class went into public and what percentage of the class is unemployed, then maybe I could do some like weighted averages or something to figure out like what the actual value is. But otherwise, this is just, I'm noticing many, many very shitty schools that are ranked at the top of the, if we, sh if we sort by median salary public, we get University of the District of Columbia. What is that? I forgot they existed, but they do exist here. University of San Diego. Private school in San Diego, very low ranked. University of San Francisco, another just, you know, like regional school in the city. California yep. Western, Loyola Law School, <laughs> Vanderbilt, and then Stanford. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> wait a second. Far more people are actually getting jobs from Stanford than are getting jobs from Golden Gate. Yet Golden Gate dramatically blows them out of the water here on median salary public. Here, let's go into his specific question. He asks yeah. us, yeah, about Northeastern and Georgetown, but um, I think we, we're going to say a lot of the same things we've already said. But I What think would we you do if you had a full ride at Northeastern while having the option to pay sticker price at Georgetown? How would you balance full ride offers slash taking on $300,000 of debt and the significant differences among median starting salaries? And that's coming from Manny. Um do you think Manny's looking at private or public? My my gut. So first of all, pu private is in like highlighted purple, right? Like public is not highlighted. Wait, what if I, oh, if I sort it. Okay. Well, anyways, when we land on this page. <laughs> Everybody's looking at private because that's the biggest number. That's the biggest number. So I don't think they're going to care about public. And they're thinking to themselves, I'm not going to go to public. I'm going into private. That's my guess. Well, no one's going to law school with an intention of making $60,000 a year which you're going to be lucky to make if you go into public practice. So yeah, <laughs> like we can assume probably that Manny's looking at private. Yep. And so then, okay. So private Georgetown has a median salary of 180, whereas uh, Northeastern has a private median salary of 126, 126,000 roughly, 127,000. So Okay, it's lower, but it's like, how many people are being used to create this number? How many people are actually up at 180 at Northeastern? I don't know. There's so many assumptions. Yeah, Northeastern is a pretty low-ranked law school uh, in Boston. I mean, it's the uh, fourth best law school that I know of in Boston, uh, maybe even worse than that. Actually, probably definitely worse than that because I don't think it ranks as high as Suffolk either. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, Harvard, BQ, BC, Suffolk, like Northeastern, way down there. Uh, they're reporting a median of $126,000. That's of people who go into private 
it's worse than it looks actually, because there are also going to be fewer people who go into private practice coming out of Northeastern than are going to go into private practice coming out of Georgetown. Absolutely. So it's going to be fewer people getting jobs and it's going to be less money when mm-hmm. you do get those jobs. Yep. That said, what do you think Manny should make of if he, you know, Manny, I, I guess the first thing I have to say, you literally, no one should be choosing between full price at Northeastern, sorry, full price at Georgetown or full ride at Northeastern. Nobody's making that actual decision. People are only making that decision when they don't follow our other advice, which is to apply broadly. Right. They've applied to two, three random schools, or maybe four right. random schools. They got denied at two of them, and now they're down between these two random extremes. And it's right. like, eh, no. You yeah, need to it, have spread your <laughs> wealth. Yeah, you're actually going to be comparing Georgetown. If you can get into Georgetown, then you can also certainly get into George Washington, George Washington and George Mason. And like there's just, you're going to have all kinds of other opportunities besides just, you know, a school ranked, whatever Northeastern is ranked, which is way, way down there. We don't have a lot more information to go on there for Manny that the, the, uh, that chart that you sent did not change my mind about anything though. No, it's just, no, it doesn't. At, well, it, it's hard to really even know what it's telling you. It's almost meaningless. It, it, it's not telling you anything helpful. Yep. Does it have impl- if we click? Oh, OK, that's interesting. If you click in. There are reports here uh, school by school. OK, OK. And, I clicked on Vanderbilt, for example. Yeah, I'm looking at Northeastern. Um, they, it does report employment rates, but all it shows is percentage of graduates employed at graduation and graduates employed 10 months after graduation, okay. but it doesn't tell you whether they're going into public or private. It doesn't tell you how much money they make on average. It doesn't, I don't know. It's not super useful. Hey, this is a little bit of a tangent, but um, this conversation reminded me of it. I had a Christmas party on the weekend, and a good friend of mine who works in, I think he works in like SEC filings and stuff like that. Anyways, he, he's an attorney, and he said, hey, like, how's the LSAT? I said, oh, by the way, it went online, and he was like, oh, I didn't know that. That's crazy, blah, blah, blah. Then um, he said, are people applying to law school like through the roof now? Because demand, at least from his perspective for attorneys, is huge these days. He said everybody's burning out. So then they leave and the firms need to pay more to get new people to come on board. There's just not enough bodies to fulfill all the work. Because so many people wash out of law. Yeah. I was like, I, I, I don't know. I didn't hear that. But, um, yeah, law school applications are up. <laughs> Need more, more cannon fodder, you know? Like, just got to continually keep sending reinforcements to the front lines. Yeah. Where the lawyers on both sides just kick the absolute shit out of each other until <laughs> half of them quit lawyering. Yep. And then, well, well, we got new, we got a new crop of people that we can work 80 hours a week and, you know, they can desperately try to repay their law school loans. <laughs> Sorry to be so dark all the time, but like, it's just, you, you, you gotta be real careful about the world you're getting yourself into. Manny, the, the odds of you successfully practicing big law, I don't know anything about you at all other than you emailed the daily, which thank you very much for emailing in, but like your odds of successfully practicing big law for like an entire career are very low. And so yep. it's up know, or that, out. That's no joke. That 180,000 that Georgetown gets to report. Um, yeah, they make that for a while, but how long do they actually make that? And are they really going to repay their $300,000 of debt before they burn out? Slash, are they even going to get that job in the first place? I mean, if you barely squeak into Georgetown, you are no guarantee to have a successful uh, 
$180,000 job waiting for you on the other end. Well, that might be why the public median salaries are actually lower for some of these higher ranked schools. The people who are going into public work, eh, maybe they're the lowest in their class and not even getting that great of <laughs> jobs in the public sector. Or there are so many people who want to practice public from that the, those salaries are driven way down, right? I mean, like if you know, so many people think that they're going to go be counsel for the American Civil Liberties Union, right? Everybody thinks that that's going to be their job. I'm going to work for the ACLU. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, but you and everyone else wants to do that job. And so that's why they don't, you know, I mean, maybe the ACLU specifically pays a lot, but many of those prestige public interest jobs are just not going to pay that much money because why would they? Because there's too many people who want to do that work. Yeah. The do gooders, um, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> not that many people want to go represent. Um, I don't know. What's the most evil company right now? We can say Amazon because they just, uh, forced that's what was in to... my head. <laughs> Even <laughs> though, but I, I hesitated. A tornado. <laughs> I hesitated because I was like, I use Amazon every day. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm an Amazon shareholder. <laughs> um, no, uh, let's say Amazon. Not very many people want to be defending Amazon and their decision to force people to go to work in a factory inside of a tornado and end up dying. Mm -hmm. That's what the lawyers who make $180,000 do, though. The people who prosecute Amazon for that do not make $180,000. No. Should we wrap it up? We should. Thanks for writing in, Manny. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.